Molly Stark, The Rights of Patients. By definition, a right is a moral, ethical, or legal principle considered as an underlying cause of truth, justice, morality, or ethics. Patients are provided with many rights and privileges to make their health care as safe and clean as possible. Rights include a patient has the right to respectful care given by a competent personnel. A patient has the right, upon request, to be given the name of his doctor and all information requested. A patient has the right to every consideration of his own privacy concerning his own medical care program. Case discussions, consultations, examinations, and treatment are considered confidential and shall be. A patient has the right to have all records pertaining his medical care treated as confidential, except otherwise provided by law or third-party contracted arrangements. A patient has the right to know what hospital rules and regulations apply to his conduct as a patient. The patient has the right to good quality care and high professional standards that are continuing. A patient has the right to refuse drugs, treatments, or procedures offered by the hospital to the extent permitted by law, and a physician shall inform the patient of the medical consequences of the patient's refusal of drugs, treatments, or procedure. A patient has the right to medical and nursing services without discrimination based upon race, color, religion, sex, sexual preference, national origin, or source of payment. The hospital shall provide the patient, upon request, access to all information contained in his medical records, unless access is specifically restricted by the attending physician for medical reasons, following discharge and the means. A patient has the right to receive care in a safe setting. A patient has the right to an environment that preserves dignity and contributes to a positive self-image. A patient has the right to be free from mental, physical, sexual, and verbal abuse. And a patient has the right and need for effective communication. The definition of a responsibility is an instance of being responsible. Not only are patients given rights, but they are also given certain responsibilities. Patients' responsibilities include provide information about present and past illnesses, hospitalizations, medications, and other matters relating to your health history. Have members of your family authorized to review your treatment if you are unable to communicate with doctors or nurses. Decide and appoint a surrogate to make healthcare decisions on your behalf to the extent permitted by law. Ask questions if you do not understand directions or procedures. Report safety concerns immediately to your doctor, nurse, or any healthcare support staff. Benjamin Rush, also known as the father of American psychiatry, believed that mental diseases were caused by irritation of blood vessels in the brain. His treatment methods included bleeding, purging, hot and cold baths, and mercury. And he invented a tranquilizer chair and a grater for psychiatric patients. He published many medical papers and gave medical lectures to physicians and students. He wrote The Medical Inquiries and Observations Upon Diseases of the Mind, the first psychiatric textbook published in Philadelphia in 1812. Another mental institution reformer was Dorothea Dix. She was an educator who successfully opened 32 state hospitals. In 1841, she discovered mentally ill patients contained in inhumane conditions. She dedicated her life to help the mentally ill. Her methods included personal visits to jails, hospitals, and wherever they were confined, and she took detailed notes to her findings. By 1850, Dorothea had gained sufficient public support for her endeavors, and bills were introduced into Congress for the government lands to be given to states whose sales would provide funds to create or support facilities for the mentally ill. The bill passed in both houses of Congress in 1851, but was vetoed by President Franklin Pierce on the basis that the care of the mentally ill was a state, not federal responsibility. Molly Stark opened on August 23rd of 1929. The hospital was named after Molly Stark, the wife of John Stark, a war general best known for his battle call, They're Your Enemies. She was a nurse to her husband's troops. 
When Molly Stark opened, it was a tuberculosis institution, equipped with only the best. It contained bedside radios and a large assembly room on the second floor, with books, games, and other things to keep patients busy. The children's wing also included a schoolroom and playroom. Additionally, Molly Stark had some of the best medical treatment. This included TB tests and surgical equipment that was top of the line. In 1956, Molly Stark became a hospital including mentally retarded patients. The hospital later became a drug and alcohol center and was suggested to treat AIDS patients, but the plan was never finished. Molly Stark became corrupt and was decertified on November 13th of 1987. When investigated, many problems were found. Lack of staff, lack of training. Ten mentally retarded patients were misplaced. Between March and September, about 10 out of 71 patients were put into the community room. State surveyors witnessed a half-naked female in the hallway, and no one tried to dress her. Staff tried to force-feed a patient, and while another employee was socializing while feeding the patient so fast, they couldn't eat. Doors were left open while patients were not closed. Dried vomit, caked dirt, dry food, and dried feces were found in various parts of the hospital. Patients were not bathed. They showed up with urine on them. The hospital was recertified after being monitored for many months of being tried on court. Unfortunately, due to lack of funding, the hospital was set to close in June of 1994. Patients were moved to different homes and institutions. The VOCA Association made random visits to homes to ensure the safety of their patients.